Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Muscatine Fieldhouse for yet another girls' basketball game. They've been loading them up the last week or so. Today we have the, by power rankings, the number six PV Spartans against the number 15 Muscatine Muskies, and that's, again, that's the go bound power rankings. That's not state rankings, remember? Looks like we're going to tip off a little bit earlier than the scheduled 1.30 uh, tip-off time. And we will turn it over to Mr. Al Hilton for the player introductions. Well, I thought we were going to turn it over to Mr. Al Hilton. Oh, he is waiting for the last 10 seconds on the clock, folks. As we get ready to take the tip, the Muskie girls are coming off a tough loss last night against Central DeWitt. And actually, they're riding a three game losing streak, unfortunately. They had two games, they had won two games prior to that Davenport Central and Clinton and then dropped three in a row to Davenport North, Assumption, and Central DeWitt last night. PV gets the tip. Isabel Lerma, okay. 
As you can tell, folks, I'm the color guy. I'm not the play-by-play. But unfortunately, due to the scheduling, uh, Toby Lehman won't be able to be with us today. So you get me for both color and play-by-play. PV comes out in the full court press. Almost turned over. Reno gets it back up to Zillig. Off somebody's foot. And PV's going the other way. That was Reagan Pagniano with the lay-in. Cross court to Watson. Pleasant Valley is led in scoring by Quinn Vice, the junior, scoring 13.4 points, followed by Pagniano at 11 and Clemens at 10 as they come down the court. What do we have? We have a carry. The Muskies are led by Riley Seaman, the senior, the admiral, 15 points. Any Zillig with 12, and junior Macy Reno with 7.8, who's really come on the last couple of games. Quick turnover as PV continues the full court press. Get it over to Watson. Trap coming. Ooh. Looks like it was tipped, maybe even a little miscommunicated. No, it was not tipped, apparently. PV leads for nothing with six minutes, 43 seconds left in the first. When we look down the stat line, uh, you know, the story isn't so much in points scored as as Clevin scores for the Spartans. Uh, you know, both teams score in the 50s on average. Muskie score 55. PV scores 59. Bradley Seaman with the putback. However, the difference comes in how many points they give up. The Spartans are only averaging 28.9 points given up. So, as we know, their defense is just stifling. Seaman up to Reno for three. Zillig with rebound, bringing it right up the court. You gotta love a five who's completely comfortable bringing the ball up the court. The ball bounces off Seaman's hand, quick turnover, back the other way. Watson catches her from behind. I believe that was Clemens. Oh, pardon me, that was Pagniano that was going in. She'll be shooting two. First one rattles out. A lot of the offense runs through Pagniano for the Spartans. She leads the team in assists. Second one drops, and PV takes a 9-5 lead. Ball tipped out by PV, B Musky Ball. This is something we actually talked about last night with the boys as the Spartans come down. Keeping the offense very well spread. Quick turnover, looked like Zilk popped it away and laid it in Reno's hands. Up to Watson, and it's picked off. I don't know. And it is Spartan ball. You know, one of the things that, uh, one of the more advanced metrics that you can use to look at teams and their effectiveness is the effective field goal percentage, which basically shows how effective they are when you account for the difference between the value of a two and a three pointer. And uh, PV is sitting at 53, 54%, which is absolutely off the charts, which explains that big point differential. <coughs> the trap works. Seaman tosses it behind Watson, turned over. 
Pagnano with the steal, puts it back in, and Coach Jones wants to take a quick timeout. If we look back at the history of this series, it's pretty lopsided, if we're being honest. Uh, out of the last 31 games, PV has won 23 of them. But that's what you expect. I mean, PV has been a powerhouse in girls' basketball for a long time. So, they come in having won four of their last five, uh, unless they played last night. Night. Oh, wait, they did. They did. They beat Assumption last night. Their data from last night's in, ours is not. So their last win, or pardon me, their last loss was against Davenport North. Skip pass. Reno for three. No good. PV with the rebound. Pushing it right up the court. They move into their smooth motion offense. Down on the post, gets away from him. Still with a good job frustrating her on defense. Seaman will bring it in to Watson in the corner. Traps coming, get the ball away before it gets there. Quick pass, nice press break. Can't quite convert, that's what's tough. They did a great job of breaking the press, and when it got down under the hoop, just didn't quite convert. For three, no good. Zilla corrals the ball. Whoa. Zilla for three, a little short. So it'll be PV ball with about three and a half minutes left, leading 14 to five. Kershaw comes in for the Muskies. Had a pretty strong game last night. Coming in in a sixth man position. PV looks pretty comfortable moving the ball outside around on the three point line. Waiting for an opportunity to come up inside. It's been a hallmark of PV basketball for a long time. You know, thinking back even to the boys more specifically, and their, I, I don't even know what kind of offense you would have called it, but it was a complete slow down, you know, the games would be, you know, 25 points would be a high scoring game. Uh, they knew how to, to work the system before the clock shot clock came into play. Muskies bring it in. Watson up the left side of the court. Got to get rid of it before the trap gets there. Seaman. Somebody's got to get to the middle. Oh. Shaw comes up, but I believe it's that a 10-second call. I'm guessing. Annie Zillig picks up the foul. PV will take it out underneath. Nice cut on the inbound. Seaman grabs the rebound. Gets fouled. Underneath the PV. Cross court. Those are always dangerous, but it seemed to make it just fine. 
Jesse Clemens, the runner down the right side. Seaman up the middle. Shaw on the corner. Zillig trying to work around underneath. PV's in a 2-3 zone. So generally you're going to try and get it to somebody in the high post there. That one soft spot right in the middle of the zone. Tipped out off the muskie, so it'll be PV ball. Pagniano and Eddie Maru check in for PV. Oh, Macy Reno was checking in. I just assumed referee Kevin Lloyd got confused. Folks that are watching, I've known Kevin a long time. Just have to give him a little bit of guff. Clemens gets fouled. Carishol, that's her second already. They've been pounding the ball down there. It's misses the first. And they're right back into their full court press. Kind of a two two one. Got to get it to the middle, right up to Shoal. Can't move. Going to end up with a jump ball here. Should make it musky ball. You know, the muskies uh, aren't doing a half bad job getting the ball up past the initial press. It's just as they're trying to recover as they fly down the court. Reno for three. Just a little long. Muskies in their traditional man defense. From about three feet behind the line, Shaw with rebound. <coughs> Watson looking to set up the offense, and holy cow, they picked that 2 3 zone up all the way out at the logo. And that's what it'll cause right there. You make that skip pass, you've got the backside defender just waiting to pop in. That was Pagniano with the steal and lay in. PV leads 21 to 5 as the ball goes over Reno's head into Addy Mars' hands. Quick up court. Couple quick passes. Back around to set up the offense. Reagan Pagniano drains another three. It's kind of a half a step back and just put it in. Ball through Siemens hands over to number 33, Morgan Russman. Russman, the senior guard. Seaman bringing the ball up the court. Just tossing it up over the zone to Shaw. Swinging it all the way around to Reno on the other side. And that skip pass is so dangerous against the 2 3 zone, and that's what you're seeing there. That'll bring it to the end of the first quarter. Muskies trail 26 to 5. And we will take a quick break and be right back for the second quarter. A Hustler Turf quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. MPW is committed to keeping Muscatine's lights on, water running, and our customers connected to the world. We monitor all utility services day and night to ensure reliability. Whether it's routine system maintenance work, 
or an outage response, our crews work on your behalf. Responsive 24-7, 365, in the field, behind the scenes, around the clock, MPW is always here. I'm proud to be a part of the system control team. I'm Jennifer Phelps, and I am MPW. In the And we're back to start the second quarter. Muskie's trail 26 to 5. Pagnolo. I apologize, folks. Pagnolo. <laughs> Over to Mullen. And then down into. Haley Aslan. Foul on Macy Reno. Should be her first. Teams first, remember, uh, we restart the foul clicker every quarter. Makes the free throw. Pushes the lead up to 29 to 5. Seaman to Watson. She's going to dribble her out. Uh, Seaman heads over to the corner. Muskies seem to not quite be sure where to, how to split the seams in this defense. Reno's pass gets tipped away. Ball's brought up by Moen. Back down to, I believe that was. Was that Volkster? I believe, number 25. Seaman for three. There we go. Hopefully that'll ignite the Muskies as they still trail 31 to 8. Kylie Mullen for three. Kaylee, pardon me. Not quite sure what happened there. No, I just missed that. Mar with it on the wing. Quinn Weiss from uh, three, four, five feet behind the three point line. He has it. 6'4", forward center combo player that can hit that shot. Reno short looked like it might have gotten tipped. That's a, you can see why she leads the team in scoring. Pagnano brings it up. Looks like we had a uh, I believe it's going to be Watson. Uh, Turn Watson. Watson picks up the foul. Quinn, oh, I think you know what? That was Quinn Vice earlier. I apologize. Shooting two. Muskies break the press. Reno for three. No good. Lerma tips it out. Looks like we've got a line change for PV. Looks like Russman. I'm not sure who the other two that came in were. Reno brings it up the court. Ball over Seaman's head. Picked up by Russman. Takes it to the hole. Isabel Lerma comes in from behind, making sure she doesn't get the shot off. She'll shoot two as PV leads 37 to 8. And we now have a line change for 
the Muskies. We're going to have... Let's see. Who do we have? Leo Los. Uh, Ella Maynard. Kershaw. Yep, Elsie Lewis. And I believe, did I see a head come in? I did. Allison, the freshman guard. So Coach Jones looking to get some of the younger players some playing time. Get used to varsity level speed. So Muskie's trail 40 to 8. Oh, Los loses the handle. She tries to split the defenders. We've got a foul underneath coming up. Jesse Clemens, number two, the senior, was called on the foul there. Elsie Lewis to Shaw. Quinn Weiss picks up her first foul. Kershaw shoot two. Misses the first. Ooh, uses every bit of the room to get in that on that one. This makes it 40 to 9 PV leads. Pagniano running from the point. Vice misses the three, a little deep. Uh, ball off Elsie's hands coming down the court that was looked like Russman Low springs it up she's got Maynard on her left Shaw at the elbow she picks up a dribble Maynard tries to shoot it down underneath to Lewis but gets picked off right back up the court Pagniano finds Russman again, who finds, I'm not sure, that was uh, Kramer. Speaking of Kramer, she grabs the rebound, puts it right back up, gets fouled. Ellen oh, Maynard picks up her first, that's the team's fourth of the second quarter. So the next foul will push PV into the bonus. And looks like we've got a line change again. Looks like we have Watson, Hag, Seaman. No, pardon me, that's Reno. Uh, Seaman, Zillig, and Isabel Lermus. So we've got our starters back in. Oh my goodness, amazing move. Not quite. Muskies get the rebound, take it back up the right side. Zillig floats it up, a little short. It's the front of the rim. PV gets the rebound, takes it off, right back up the left side of the court.
Moen with the offensive rebound back out to Bluehurst. Yep, that was Regan Pagniano again. It's 16 for Pagniano on the afternoon. I don't think Seaman was quite ready for that. Watson shoots it into Zillig. A little too, a little too much zip on it. Bounces right off her hands and into PVs. Right up the court and... Lerma almost had her hands on the rebound there. Seaman right on the elbow. Skip pass back to Lerma. Finds Zillick underneath and that is exactly how you break down a zone. There's a couple of seams right in between the left and right side of the lane. And Jesse Clemens grabs the rebound, puts it back. It's her ninth point. Zillig to Seaman on the elbow. And just doesn't get the roll. Again, that was nice movement to two of the seams right down underneath and then right back out to the top Watson picks her up at the logo underneath great defense by Zillig Seaman takes it all the way up the court got a foul on the floor on Kramer Vice back in As Kramer takes a seat that is the there's a third foul on PV for the quarter quick turnover right back into Pagnano's hands goes Nice drive by Kaylee Moen, just didn't quite fall. A little left-handed runner. Watson to Zillig in the corner. Seaman coming in, didn't quite get to the seam. Seaman goes to put it up and was not fouled. However, the ball went off of PV. So it'll stay musky ball, we'll stay at this side. Harvey. They did give it to her. You know, the first ref just uh, motioned out of bounds. Second one falls, so makes it 49 13 PV with 12 seconds left in the first half. And that will do it for the first half of basketball. The Muskie girls hosting Pleasant Valley Spartans in trail 49 to 13. We'll take a break and be back with the second half in a few minutes. In the future, more and more of the energy we use will come from renewables. However, the transition to being carbon free is a long journey, taking years of research and trillions of dollars nationwide. Our Power in the Future plan is a balanced approach. It increases sustainability while maintaining reliability and affordable rates for Muscatine. And it allows the flexibility to adopt new innovations as they become viable. The future is coming and we're embracing change to do what's best for our community. Learn more at mpw.org. 
Rivo, the plumbing experts for Muscatine and surrounding areas, has moved. Our new location at 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking and a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo Incorporated, call us for your next remodel. We are looking for a zero turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience, we know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo incorporated skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At MPW, we're excited about the future of Muscatine and our role in supporting the community's growth and prosperity. I've raised my family here, and I'm proud to do impactful work for my neighbors every day. And we're working daily on MPW's Powering the Future plan to ensure we can deliver reliable, affordable, and sustainable services to your homes and businesses for generations to come. I am Jamie Raker, and I am MPW. Musky Sports are brought to you by Muscatine Power and Water, Muscatine Lawn and Power, Rivo Plumbing and Heating, Unity Point Health, Trinity Muscatine, Bear of Muscatine, Muscatine Church of Christ, H&J Cards, It Takes a Village Animal Rescue and Resources, Impact Fitness and Nutrition, Zach Fry at the Lee Agency, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Muscatine, Muscatine Symphony Orchestra, Josiah Anderson at Real Estate Resource Associates, Star Collectibles, Harper Cycling and Fitness, Muscatine Charities, and a special shout out to Mississippi Pearl Photography for all those great pictures of your Muscatine Muskies. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. Did we mention quality matters? Welcome to our cut quality center. Let's take a closer look. Our mowers provide superior laser precision cut quality for a perfectly manicured lawn. Let's break this down in science terms. This grass is cut good. This grass is cut not as good. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Have you heard the littlest things can make the biggest difference? Every day, bigs and littles are connecting in our community. Their time together can look a little different, but the goals and outcomes are the same. Littles are building confidence, forming better relationships, a sense of belonging, and achieving big goals. But there are more kids just like me who are still waiting. Will you join us in making more matches possible? Support big brothers, big sisters. Almost like it knows when you can least afford. Ah, another clogged drain? Lucky for you, Rivo is always standing by. With multiple master plumbers on staff, Rivo not only handles your home-related issues, Rivo will also diagnose and design large-scale commercial piping systems. Family-owned, reliably honest, remarkably affordable. Complete kitchen and bath home improvement technicians. Because Rivo won't rest until your plumbing problems are gone. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. 
especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. MPW is committed to keeping Muscatine's lights on, water running, and our customers connected to the world. We monitor all utility services day and night to ensure reliability. Whether it's routine system maintenance work or an outage response, our crews work on your behalf. Responsive 24-7, 365, in the field, behind the scenes, around the clock, MPW is always here. I'm proud to be a part of the system control team. I'm Jennifer Phelps and I am MPW. In the future, more and more of the energy we use will come from renewables. However, the transition to being carbon free is a long journey, taking years of research and trillions of dollars nationwide. Our Power in the Future plan is a balanced approach. It increases sustainability while maintaining reliability and affordable rates for Muscatine. And it allows the flexibility to adopt new innovations as they become viable. The future is coming and we're embracing change to do what's best for our community. Learn more at mpw.org. Rivo, the plumbing experts for Muscatine and surrounding areas, has moved. Our new location at 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking and a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo Incorporated, call us for your next remodel. We are looking for a zero-turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience, we know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero-turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo incorporated skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At MPW, we're excited about the future of Muscatine and our role in supporting the community's growth and prosperity. I've raised my family here, and I'm proud to do impactful work for my neighbors every day. And we're working daily on MPW's Powering the Future Plan to ensure we can deliver reliable, affordable, and sustainable services for your homes and businesses for generations to come. I am Jamie Raker, and I am MPW. Muskie Sports are brought to you by Muscatine Power and Water, Muscatine Lawn and Power, Rivo Plumbing and Heating, Unity Point Health, Trinity Muscatine, Bear of Muscatine, Muscatine Church of Christ, H&J Cards, It Takes a Village Animal Rescue and Resources, Impact Fitness and Nutrition, Zach Fry at the Lee Agency, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Muscatine, Muscatine Symphony Orchestra, Josiah Anderson at Real Estate Resource Associates, Star Collectibles, Harper Cycling and Fitness, Muscatine Charities, and a special shout out to Mississippi Pearl Photography for all those great pictures of your Muscatine Muskies. You know Rivo as expert. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back to start the third quarter. Muskie's trail, 49-13. to 13. You, Everything you need to know about the first half, you can see in the score. Uh, everything that PVs wanted to do, they've been able to do. Nothing that the Muskies have wanted to do, have they been able to. The 2-3 zone of PV's uh, 
pretty well given fits to the Muskies when they make it down into the half-court offense. And as they press, the Muskies haven't quite had the answer for that yet either. Pagnano brings it up. Over to Vice and to, I believe, that was Clemens. Yep, Jesse Clemens. Yeah, as I mentioned at the top of the broadcast. The Spartans only give up about 28 points a game. So, you know, if you figure that's an average, there's games where they probably don't give up 20 points. Jesse Clemens. It's nothing but net from the right elbow. Ball slips through Zillig's hands. Last touched by PV, so it'll be musky ball underneath. So one thing you will notice is the continuous clock will be clicking in and out here as the Iowa High School Girls Association has a 35-point mercy rule where anytime after the end of the first half and a 35-point lead or greater is held by one team, the clock will keep running other than timeouts uh, time in between quarters and uh, fouls for free throws. And of course, obviously, moments like that uh, for player safety. We have a technical on... on the Pleasant Valley bench. I'm not quite sure. Not quite sure what happened there. Seaman will shoot two. First one is good. Second one is good and the Muskies will retain possession. I can only guess that they said something. I don't know the 39-point 39, 39 lead. I don't know what they possibly said, but... Zillig just misses the rebound. Pagnano brings it up. Reno with the foul. Sending Vice to the line. Wait. Pardon me. It is. That's 24. Isabel Kramer. Pardon me. The 6'3 sophomore. The 23 and 24 look the same behind the blonde pigtails. And she makes them both. So that makes it 56-15 PV. Watson up to Lerma. Back to Watson. Tries to get it to Shaw at the top of the key, but no luck. Holy cow, great cut hit as she went through. We're going to have an over and back. Musky ball. 
4.50 left in the third. Haley Aslan checks in, or heads to the scores table, I guess I should say. Shaw tips it, but can't quite get it under control. PV right back up the court. There's Kaylee Moen bringing it up. Isabel Kramer, you, you could see she was going to be open from the time she came running around the right-hand side through, I think it was two screens, and popped wide open, hit her on full steam right at the rim. She'll shoot two. Thinking this is the girl you don't want to put on the line. Well, considering she shoots just shy of 80% from the free throw line, that is not the girl you want to put there. Watson brings it up the right side. Shaw battling at the elbow. Lerma tries to penetrate. Gets it back out to Seaman. Zillig, not quite. Tight rim, bounces right on out. Back over to Moen. That was a ridiculously nice move by Vice over to her left hand, scooped it all the way around for two. As PV pulls a little further ahead, 60 to 15. Three minutes left in the third. Lerma, I think she might have tried to change her mind on whether she was going to pass it or pick it up. A little double dribble. Morgan Russman checks in. Pagnano brings it up across the half court line. Ball bounces off of Watson right there with Pagnano. Casey Kane checks in, as well as Isabella Kramer as well. Zillig with the rebound over to Seaman. Comes up the right side of the court. Watson in the corner. Looks at Zillig underneath, but not quite there. Pushes it back out to the top. Seaman for three with the assist from Shaw. Again, you know, that's, that's what you've got to do with the... Two, three zones. Get the ball to that top right in the middle, dead center. Get one of them to break, and you're going to have somebody open on a wing. <laughs> no look pass by Pagnano. Wasn't quite where she needed it to go, so Muskie's come the other way. To Shaw. Oh. Shaw tries to get one more pass into Zillig underneath. She was. She looked like she might have been open as well, but... You know, that's a tough one. You see somebody else, you're pretty open. You see somebody else wide open. But just not quite a clear passing lane in between. Russman brings it up. Casey Kane to her left. Russman from well beyond the line. Zillig picks up the rebound. Pushes it up to Lerma on the right-hand side. Quick rip through. Tries to penetrate. Doesn't get there. Over to Shaw at the free throw line. Just off the back of the rim. Couldn't get it quite enough under it to slow it down to let it drop. Zillig gets her hands on the air and pass. Over to Seaman. Up to Lerma. Shawl from way outside. That's a shot she's got, though. I don't mind that. Back 
Weiss and Maher back in for the Spartans. And we also have Reese O'Donnell checking in as well. I believe that's the first time she's checked in. Shaw at the free throw line over to Seaman. Drives down the baseline. Poked out by O'Donnell, but it looks like she might have got her hand on her. Seaman nails the free throw like she's done it a hundred times before. And there's the second one. That is that girl has some amazing muscle memory on her shots. As we come up on the 10 second mark. And the ball is doesn't matter because that is the end of the third quarter. The PV Spartans lead 60 to 20. We'll take a quick break and be right back for the fourth quarter. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. Did we mention quality matters? Welcome to our cut quality center. Let's take a closer look. Our mowers provide superior laser precision cut quality for a perfectly manicured lawn. Let's break this down in science terms. This grass is cut good. This grass is cut not as good. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler And we are back for the fourth quarter. Muskie's trail, 60 to 20. So as this is greater than a 35 point lead, the clock will continue to run. Lerma gets the rebound, brings it up the right hand side. Over to Zilla, who tries to skip it all the way across, doesn't quite make it. Pagniano, I thought she was gonna go up. Kicks it out though. Three, Reese O'Donnell hits the three. Looks like she's a shooter. Seaman to Zillick underneath. Shaw grabs the loose ball. Doesn't have anywhere to go with it. You know, that's when I wish Zillick, you know, didn't need to put it on the floor. Just grab it, go straight up and in. Try and draw the foul. Zillick with the rebound all the way down, pulls up, puts it in. Zillick's second basket. Seaman leads the Muskies with 13. Seaman gets her hands on it. Lerma comes away, brings it up over to Watson. Zillick flashes, but the pass wasn't quite there. Zillick. There we go, that is exactly how it needs to be done. Ball's on her left hand side, two steps and up with her left hand. Ball never touched the court. Whoa. Not quite sure that was the pass that was anticipated, but it happened to work out. Pagnano off the screen, down the right-hand side. Goes up, Watson will get called for the foul. 
Sending her to the line for two. It's the first foul of the fourth quarter. The clock will stop for the free throws. Makes the first. I'll say this is kind of surprising. Pagnano is only shooting 65% from the free throw line on the season. Based on what I've seen, I would have expected that to be, you know, mid-70s. And there's the second one. Line change coming for the Spartans. Silk skips it over to Reno for three. Right off the back of the rim. Seaman grabs it. Gets blocked on the way to the hoop. She'll be shooting two. It's on 23. Wait, no. 20. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, folks. Mr. Hilton got the wrong 23. That was on Vice, not our East Bolerma. Seaman makes the first one, 25-65. Makes the second as well. Now, if you're looking to a bright spot for the Muskies, They've scored 26, PV only averages giving up 28, so they're within the range of eclipsing the average. Ella Maynard's in. Leo Los. Leo must have come in for Taryn. <laughs> Maynard for Shaw. Aslan with the three. Aslan. Muskie's working it around the three-point line. Reno gets it over to Maynard. And we're going to have a jump ball. Four minutes left in the fourth. Kensley Paul, the sophomore, checks in along with Caitlin Hag. Yes, that is Caitlin. Reno for three, hits the outside of the rim, and oh, we got a mess going on. And I think they're just going to call it out of bound on the. Oh, nope. They did get the foul on Los. Second team foul for the Muskies. Ooh. Long and outside. Tries to save it right into Reno's hands. Comes right down the left-hand side of the court. Right down the left. Straight down the left-hand side. To Leo in the lane. Just kind of bouncing around, and now we have a jump ball. Be PV's ball. Claire Brown Lincoln in for the Muskies, number 12. Oh, Paul with the. Paul did a great job stepping over there, keeping her hands straight up. Causing the travel because she didn't have anywhere to go. Hey, DeLeo Lopes. I will say that still continues to mess with me, calling her Leo Lopes when I went to school with another Leo Lopes who does not look anything like her. Ball off of Claire Burr. So it'll be PV's ball. Elsie Lewis checks in as well as Allison Haig. 
Minute and a half left. Three's long. Hag takes it all the way down, goes to the hoop, draws the foul. Allison's just a freshman, 5-2 guard. Great shooter. Uh, she and I have had some discussions about her first threes of every game. She needs to get her legs in him a little more. Looks pretty good from the free throw line. Three rattles in and out for PV. Paul wrestles it away. The Muskies head up court. Lewis to Paul underneath. Doesn't quite go, almost gathers her own rebound. Bounces off PV, so it'll stay musky ball. Caitlin Hagel inbound it. Running a classic box. Oh, shifted box. What are we? Wow. Elsie Lewis tries to get it in underneath. Picked off by PV, headed the other way. Three long and outside. Oh, not quite sure what happened there. I don't think anybody was on the same page. Not quite sure who that was, but that'll wrap it up as the Muskies lose 70 to 27 against PV. Player of the game, I think we gotta go with Bradley Seaman. He's the only one that could consistently put the ball in the hole for the Muskies, but as you know, this will be a good learning experience for him, a lot of good playing time. And and let's be real folks, P V is good. There's just no no ifs, ands, or buts about it. P V has won a heck of a girls basketball program, and you saw it on full display here today. So kudos to them and uh Great job, great effort to our girls. They'll bounce back this week. And we will see you right back out here on Tuesday. Enjoy the rest of your week and Muscatine.